I'm talking with Ferdy Filamarino, director of new Netflix political thriller, Beckett, starring John David Washington. Hi, Ferdy. Hello. I appreciate you taking the time to chat with blackfilm.com all the way from Milan. That's where you are right now, right? I'm actually down in Sicily right now. Ah, wow. I just I just got here after because we premiered at the Locarno Film Festival uh, the day before yesterday, and after mm -hmm. that I came I came south. Nice, right? Okay. So I thoroughly enjoyed your film. I mean, and I empathized with John David's um, character in a way that I haven't before uh, for a character in an action thriller. And I think that's largely due to how the story was presented. So I wanted to know what incited the idea for the story. Well, the idea was um, to add one layer to that to the genre you referred to. You you said both political thriller and action thriller and, and neither is wrong but I would add dramatic thriller mm. meaning my idea I mean I've always loved that that this type of thrillers where there's a manhunt of sorts meaning our, our main character is in some way having to run away from forces that want to stop him or kill him right. uh, and there is a political background a, a large theater and in some ways there's a uh, he is Im implicated with something much greater than him. That, that Those sort of ingredients have excited me about many films, about many books, yeah. from the start of the 20th century all the way down uh, to even uh, more recent films like No Country for Old Men. However, uh, I, I like the idea of finding uh, an angle that I, I would find appealing, and it, the relatability of the main character was key to me. And so I thought, to do two things. One was to put the focus of the character much more prominent, the focus on the character much more prominent than is usually in these films. Mm. So very much in the foreground and also very much forcing our perspective on how we experience the whole adventure. And second, to make that character a dramatic character. And so not necessarily a thriller character, if you know what I mean. In some yeah. ways, the film begins as a drama, like a relationship drama between these two tourists who are just in Greece enjoying land uh, and ruins and, and beautiful Greek things. Uh, and then their drama movie is hijacked by a thriller. Yes. And in some ways, this makes Beckett, the main character played by John David Washington, in the wrong movie. And I like that as an idea, as a premise, that he would kind of need to figure out how the tone of the movie he was in has changed into something else and how he can survive that and what he can do about it. I love that because the beginning to your point, um, did it does feel like a completely different movie. And so it pulled a different type of emotion. And then my emotions were also hijacked once, you know, things um things took a turn. Um and I like I love that sort of heightened um ability to experience a film. And so what informed the brilliant decision to cast John David Washington as Beckett? Well, you see that having because the character has these two aspects to him one is basically the the difficulty of portraying a, a man in a personal crisis of sorts yeah. and the other is once the movie is hijacked by this thriller this manhunt there is something you know the, the, we, we do pay respects to the genre in all its adventurous and physical ways including with some action so uh the you know whoever was going to play Beckett needed to uh, embody both of these things. And I saw in John David, uh, I remember watching Black Klansman mm. and seeing how he completely filled the screen with coolness and uh, with energy, even physical energy in some scenes. And then I saw Monsters and Men, mm. uh, where the character could not have been more different fair enough but the performance was so different that character was tormented it there was something very minimalistic about the quality of his performance and seeing these two films i felt that both of the things that beckett needed to convey uh to the audience john david could nail perfectly and uh, and then of course i was lucky enough to meet him and yeah, I was lucky enough that he responded to the material and that he was interested in the fact that Beckett was so unusual as a character for a thriller that, uh, you know, his 
passion and talent and all of the work uh, made him deliver the most amazing performance. Yeah, I think he did a masterful job balancing um, emotional and physical reactions. It looked and felt so authentic um, and extremely relatable, um, even in the chaos of it all. Um, I also thought the symbiotic relationship you know, between the landscape, the topographical landscape, and the main character's action and mission stood out beautifully. And I thought they were... They, they were very much in support of one another. Can you yeah. share? Can you share your thought process in creating that visual narrative? Well, to me, again, a manhunt film is uh, inevitably married to uh, landscape, sure. or or if it's urban architecture, you know, uh, or urban architecture, I should say, uh, and therefore. You know, to to make a very silly example, if a character needs to get to a certain village, but there happens to be a mountain and a river between them, then the story of the movie changes. Because if there weren't that mountain and that river, he would yeah. just walk right up to the village. Uh, but what you know, and as you keep adding things on this equation, there's people after him. He does not speak the language, etc. Then you see that the story significantly can change. Things can go wrong. And when I was driving around Greece trying to find the best spots to to set the story in. I, I even worked backwards and in some places that mm. I fell in love with, I went back to the script and, and changed the scenes accordingly because the places that I found were so interesting, so interesting and, and, and so much informed the tone that I wanted to convey where the most uh you know unexpected things are obstacles sure. uh, and things that you have to figure out where a normal hero would just sort of like, sure, I'll just grab this guy's car and drive over there. And Beckett has to, has to contend with, you know, people who have their own lives, their own problems, uh, a, a bus full of architecture students who are maybe are not so welcoming. It's just uh, all the, all the things that the landscape invited both topographically, like you mentioned, but also, you know, it with the life that they host. Yeah, I, I thought the landscape was its own character. And I loved how, you know, the story st starts out in the outskirts and then ended up, you know, in the city. Yeah. It's with this thing from the unknown to the known. So again, I felt like I was going through this process with Beckett um, as him as a character, but also in this beautiful place in Greece and not knowing what's going to happen. Um, and I think it also went hand in hand with the evolution of Beckett's emotions, like the landscape also kind of carried Beckett's emotions in a really beautiful way. Um, something that stood out to me and I loved it was the before and after shots of Beckett's on the cliff. Um, I thought they were frighteningly incredible. And that's a huge nod to the different angles in the scene and, and how it expressed that significance. What was your goal for that particular scene? What do you mean before and after? So it, within that scene before, you know, he's looking around and he's trying to decide whether he's going to jump or not. So between, yeah. right. So what was that goal with shooting the different angles? Well, I mean, in a play, in a location such as that one, which is basically a humongous canyon. <laughs> uh, and uh, mind you, we brought, we, you know, we shot obviously in a, that, you can't reproduce that place. We went there right. and uh, save for the jump, which would have been illegal. Uh, it is John David actually hanging on that cliff. Uh, obviously, we needed to convey that vertical, uh, how can I say, to be vulgar, that sucks you in. Right. You know, right. Uh, it's sudden, you know, he's running away and he finds himself on a cliff and there's that feeling because his energy is going forwards, but forwards appears a new energy and it sucks down into a void of certain death. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it, the camera angles to me are uh, instrumental in informing mm -hmm. this, the, what, that what you cannot describe with dialogue, uh, which is something instinctual and emotional. It mm -hmm. has everything to do with, especially in a scene like this, uh, the gut feeling. So I guess in that scene, I, I, I looked for the angles to describe this vertical, but also this need that Beckett has to 
upon looking back and seeing that he can't really go back mm. or sideways, he needs to find a way to go forward despite this this uh, sucking into uh, danger that he also has forward. But then, you know, uh, it's, it was a very complicated scene to shoot, by the way, because, of course, we couldn't yeah. ourselves go in the void. So I had to find a different place which looked similar, similar nearby. And mm. it's all about the geography of the angles because the geography of the landscape is completely cheated so i i'm happy that you appreciated it oh, because it's all it's all artificial in a way in terms of um the geography sure of sure. where he goes but but those those were their important things you know those sense of, of danger and that sort of butterfly feeling that you get in your gut that's what informed the camera angles i would say Mission accomplished, sir. Mission accomplished. <laughs> and I, I really love the significant connection between the cliff and the garage parking. Um, yeah. Scene, right? Beckett was jumping away from, and then at the end, he's jumping towards. And I just thought that was beautifully done. Um, so was that something that was already determined in the story or the script? And then, you know, it was conveyed or did it happen during? Very much. No, no, it was very much written in um i wouldn't want to spoil the ending too much right. but there is something about that scene on the cliff where obviously i mean we're already talking about it Beckett jumps uh to not death but to save himself in fact and that has uh both and, and then something similar but different happens towards the end of the film uh both instances have to do with a sort of recklessness that for completely different reasons has to do with i need to do this no matter what yeah what's interesting is how different these the reasons behind that need are at the beginning of the film which is sheer survival to save my skin yes but at the end of the film it's the opposite Ugh. he absolutely does not need to do anything of the sort to right. survive right. uh and uh that that's the reason why they're always there together to, to convey this difference and therefore this change in character. And I'll bite I'll bite with the same exact gesture, this right. jump. And it made me think of uh, Beckett towards the beginning of the film um, when he is with his girlfriend played by Amalisha Vikander. Um, and she's taking a picture of him, but he's a little, you know, trepidatious about, you know, joining her. And so, yeah. you know, to go from that to now this guy who's jumping off cliffs and jumping off a garage parking lot, it's, yeah, it's a great um, arc, character arc um, for Beckett. Well, um, and John, John David says something very interesting about this. Uh, he says, the most dangerous animal is the wounded animal. Ooh. And and I completely agree with him. And obviously this, this, this uh, the, the very metaphor he uses addresses an idea of instinct which mm -hmm. i find he uses a lot in the way he works and definitely in this movie was crucial and central uh so probably uh, you know in the beginning of the film we're in a civilized world he's in a civilized dynamic and obviously we are seeing the differences between he is and, and his girlfriend who is going somewhere where she's not supposed to and he's like i, I don't want to mm -hmm. break the rules you know but then of course you know the the dramatic thing that that happened happened, and then you know the wounded Ammon animal uh, changes his behavior. And that that speaks a lot to the relatability of his character, because any ordinary human being would probably you know have done the same thing. Um, I thought the film had such a classic vantage point, which made its presence uh, familiar yet very unique. Uh, what other directors or films influenced um, your vision or this project? So many. I have to go back to even literature before films. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I read a lot of British books from the beginning of the 20th century because I found, uh, this is my own theory, completely unproven, but the, you know, the British obviously have a great passion for hunting uh, animals. Yeah. But when it came to the political confusion of the 1930s in all of Europe and the rest of the world, it seemed to me like they put that passion and the turmoil of the politics and put them together in a sort of subgenre of manhunt stories where, you know, between the wars or with the coming war or with a war already started, they kind of have to, uh, they are hunted and they have to uh, save the day somehow. Mm -hmm. 
in a way, I guess, to cope with the pressure of the political moment. Uh, an example is The 39 Steps, which was a beautiful book, which also became a movie, although the tone changed more into a comedy. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, I found that that planted the seed that then continued in the rest of the 20th century and other movies like uh, uh, in, in America in the 70s with what was happening politically with the Watergate scandal and the Pentagon Papers and this sort of distrust in the establishment, a series of movies like The Three Days of the Condor, um, uh, or even All the President's Men, um, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, or going back to Britain again, Odd Man Out, uh, this idea of a hunted man and stakes much greater than him somewhat falling on his shoulders. Many of these types of films inspired me. Nice. And I, I loved, um, again, a lot of things that I loved about this film, the close-ups of Beckett um, looking at something and then shots from his point of view of what he's seeing. It pulled me in. I felt incredibly involved in the narrative in some way. And while I've watched a ton of um, action thriller, dramatic films, I don't know that I've ever connected to a character the way that I did to Beckett. And again, that goes back to how the story was told. I uh, am very happy you appreciate the close-ups because obviously, statistically, there are many less close-ups in this film than there <laughs> are, I think, in the average film today. Mm. Uh, definitely in the, uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, to me, the close-up is, uh, is in some ways a... Uh, a very delicate secret, not so secret weapon, but I respect it so much in what it can deliver, what an yeah. actor can deliver in it, that I, you know, I, I, I really, really, really think many, many times before I, I go and use one. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'm very glad you appreciated it because obviously um, this movie has, it's kind of two movies like we've been saying, and there is, this sort of uh, this beast hunting our main character, yeah. metaphorically speaking. And then there's this inner turmoil and the two things play with each other. And uh, uh, I think that, that, that dance between these two things is what allows us to be both close to him, but also enjoy the adventure, uh, you know, enjoy at his peril, but enjoy for us sure. watching a genre film the adventure of what is happening. I also enjoyed the presence of the music um, in conjunction with uh, Beckett's aim um, in the film. And again, the, the music also served sort of its own as its own character and also sound. One sound in specifically still bouncing around <laughs> in my head is the dog whimpering uh, because, because his owner gets attacked. There was something very um, significant about hearing that in the background is Beckett, um, John David's character is, is aiming to get away. While I understand the intent, I'd love to hear the purpose behind that decision. Well, there's something, you know, that old story in, in horror cinema, what is it, what's scarier, what you see or what you don't see, mm. you know? Uh, and it, with the premise that we mentioned earlier of experiencing this, this uh, uh, dangerous trip, as, as through Beckett only, and not yeah. as a sort of omniscient uh, viewer where you, you see and understand everything before he does. No, in this movie, you see it and experience it with him. I found it interesting to stage things also happening outside his field of view, but that he would be perfectly aware, more or less, uh, let's say, of what is going on. And that, that I found to be much more unsettling. And unsettling is definitely a feeling I was, I was looking for and I found interesting with the tone of this film. Uh, so, you know, that ha it, obviously the premise, the, what happens in that scene is I'll take care of it. Uh, you know, it's going to be okay. But then of course it's absolutely not okay. Oh, okay. And technically, if you listen closely, the, the dog gets shot. That's why he whimpers. <laughs> I, mean, I, I uh, teared up in that moment. <laughs> but but I, I, and I find it that more, violent mm -hmm. uh having to imagine it yes you know yeah uh it's not like you don't see anything you see a little bit but it's uh, it's also you know obviously you don't in a situation like Beckett's you don't kind of sit around and stare right. you need to get away 
Yeah, I mean, you know, just a random question. If you were to shoot this film again, would you do it differently? Um, yeah, I would do it better. <laughs> I mean, really? if you were to shoot it again, ha shoot it again, having already shot it, I, I, I mean, what? yeah, I, I think if any any director had the chance, and 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 uh, I would say perhaps the emotional strength to go through something over mm -hmm. twice, and I, I think. There would only be good movies, probably. I don't know, Freddie. I don't know. I feel like this was this was pretty perfect the way that it is, and tampering with it in any way would completely just, I don't know, change the map. Look, it's it's so hard to shoot a movie, and there are so many things that one would think have nothing to do with filmmaking that come in the way of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, they are part of it. Time, yeah, people's schedules, weather. It's all part of filmmaking. It makes things more difficult. And therefore, sometimes one may feel, ah, that could have been better. But also other times, that opens up a door to something unimaginable before. So it goes both ways. It's a yeah. complex equation. And then again, you know, I, I was able to make this movie. John David was like, I want to do it. We found our, you know, the window we could do it in. And uh, I, that's not how I envisioned the season to be the landscape, mm -hmm. different colors, but that's how we got to make the movie and th that's what it is now. And I, you know, it's great. <laughs> and I'm, I'm glad you made it. And so one last thing, um, towards the end of the movie, I had an aha moment. I'd like to think that it was unique to me, but I doubt it. So in the last scene, close up shot um, to Beckett's face as everything plays out, I thought about Bond born Beckett. Right, James Bond, Jason Bourne, and now Beckett. Would, would, did that uh, ever did that ever enter your your mind at all through this the entire project? The uh, connection. I have to be frank with you. What it? I mean, basically, when I when I set off trying to conceive the story, one of the most important things I had on my desk was the things not to do, and the things to stay away from, and definitely the idea of uh, talking about our main character, being a spy, being uh, like cool and uh, in the most literal and obvious sense, sort of badass. Those were all on the not to do things. And obviously Bond and Bourne are spies, perfect fighters, hyper intelligent, uh, way ahead of everyone else and super cool. But I like the idea of doing none of these things and of having right. someone who is normal, relatable, doesn't necessarily know how to fight, ha has a physical presence. You know, we imagine this character has a, a background in football, just like John David does, because that obviously comes into play with the yeah. toll is high. Uh, but he has to figure it out during the movie. It's, he doesn't come prepackaged and prepared the way those other characters are. Uh, in a way, it's a sort of deconstruction of those, of those, if you will. Uh, and again, I found that to be, in its relatability, uh, more fun for me. Mm. Yeah, I, I also love the alliteration between the three, the B. The I guess so, the I guess so. <laughs> although, although Beckett is a bit more absurd, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, uh, again, I thought, you know, everything about this film just worked really beautifully. Um, and it was such a worthy payoff at the end. I, I, I've never cried during a dramatic <laughs> thriller, and I literally wow. boomed, which I thought um, was incredible in terms of all the emotions that I went through watching this film. Uh, I thought I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed everything about it. Um, so Beckett premieres Friday, August 13th on Netflix. Anything you, you want people to walk away thinking or feeling about this film? Or what should people expect? Well, I, I absolutely, I'm, I'm so happy that you had that reaction at the end and definitely what, uh, that's beautiful. And I think walking away with an emotion mm. is the best thing that I could hope for, for people who watch this film, because that's kind of the, what the final note of the film is. It's, it's you know, um, again, a nod to this dramatic character, even though of course the plot finds itself towards a conclusion and things are resolved, the final note is on this man who has mm -hmm. went, gone through a, a personal crisis and what does it all mean? That's what, to me, the end is about. 
beautifully stated. What can we look forward to from you in the future? Like I'm already like, what I can't wait to see next. <laughs> well, uh, uh, I'm writing something else that's that's also uh, that also approaches approaches genre from an angle uh, the way I mean from a different angle, but in the same way that I try to do with this. I like this idea of of playing with genre a little bit and trying to find my own uh, perspective on it. Got it. Got it. Thank you, Ferdy, so much for talking with BlackFilm.com. This was amazing. I'm looking forward thank to you. having you. I'm looking thank forward to having me again. Yes. Thank you and take yeah, care. Yeah, me too. Me too. This was fun. <laughs> you too. All right, Ferdy. Take care. Bye. It was.